Good afternoon and welcome to the season premiere of Mean Green Game Day. I'm your host, Michelle Brooks, and I am joined by analysts Justin Ballou, Connor Hibbett, and Jack Brown. We also have our sideline reporter, Zach Vox, who will be joining us later on. The UNT men's basketball team is coming off its fourth straight win. They beat Rice twice last week back to back, and JV on Hamlet specifically had a great game, scoring 30 points. Connor, I want to talk to you first about this game. What are we doing right right now? <laughs> well, first of all, we're, we're having a little bit of an easier schedule, so it's helping. We, UNT had a very difficult non-conference schedule to start the season off, so that didn't exactly help. But the last month or so of the season, they played very well, and I really like what I'm seeing out of this team. We already knew the defense was going to be fantastic coming into the season, and it has been nothing short of that so far. But the offense has really starting to turn around things. And we have three players right now that are in double figures in terms of points. So that's really important, especially moving on as the season progresses with different guys being able to be, uh, to be, able to be counted on. We obviously know what Javen Hamlet has been so far last season and what he's been so far this season. So I'm really liking what I'm seeing with the team chemistry. Justin, what are your thoughts? I think I, I agree with you. You know, Javion Hamlet in that first Rice game, you know, he proved yet again this season that he can step up when called upon. You know, 30 points, a career high. And then in the second Rice game, the home game, you know, it was more of a team effort. Every single player on, on the UNT roster scored a field goal in the Sunday game. So it was more of a group effort. And that's what makes this team so special that any of these guys can step up on a given night. And then I think defensively, Connor, you made a good point about the defense being improved this season. And in the first Rice game, the, the defense kind of struggled, you know, and Rice was shooting 50% from the field and getting a lot of open looks. But McCaslin took a step back. They went, they went back and watched film. And they improved things, and Rice dropped down to 37% in the following game. Yeah, so improvement on defense is, is the biggest key. No, that's totally right, though, Justin. I agree. The game from Friday to Saturday was night and day. So Coach McCaslin coined it the best performance yet by this team. Jack, what do you think? Yeah, I would have to agree with him. You got you got 34 rebounds, eight steals, all around. You you got anything you wanted against Rice in the second game. You know the whole the whole time, Grant McCaslin, even though it was a blowout, he was he was yelling and he was he was still getting on them hard, getting the best out of them. I think Grant McCaslin really did get the best out of them. Yeah. Yeah. Jess McBride, you know, he's a starter, but it was important to see these guys stepping up in bigger roles, and, and we saw that everybody can contribute, too. We got 30 points off the bench. The bench it, had 30 points himself, so that's, go. that's going to be really key moving forward. Depth is so important in every single sport. Mm -hmm. Basketball is one of the biggest in terms of depth. I agree with you on that one, Connor. We have quite the round of guys right now. I want to talk about James Reese, actually, because Friday night he didn't play. He was out with a leg injury. He comes back and in that second game against Rice, and he – goes all out. I think that goes to show the coaching right now. He's Coach McCaslin is keeping his team hot. What do you guys think? Uh, I, I just want to say it just shows the depth of, of UNT. Ruben Jones being able to come in and, and take on some more minutes for uh, Reese being out. And Reese did during the Rice game. He, he tweaked it a little bit, but he went back out and finished the game, even though it was a blowout. Yeah, you know, and before the before the second Rice game, Reese was hobbling around in pregame warmups, and t you can tell that he was really trying to stretch out that ankle and make sure he was good to go. And he was hobbling around during the game too, like Jack mentioned, but shows he was a warrior man. He still had double-digit points, so he still stepped up through his injury. I think McCaslin's been one of the better coaches in the country these last few years. I mean, when he was hired here a few years ago, we were all thinking, okay, so let's build, let's see if we can, let's see what we can do in the near future. Well, that near future happened a lot qu quicker than a lot of people would have thought. Two years later, we're, we're winning Conference USA, which we hadn't done in a long time. So, th so this, is a, this is a very bright future for UNT basketball, and we keep getting these transfers, and there's been a, a couple additional rules for college basketball. You're going to see a lot of teams start going to the transfer portal, so I would look for in the near future for UNT to really hit that transfer portal hard, and we're getting a lot of really, really good recruits, so I'm really liking the, the, the direction of our basketball program. Yeah, I think recruiting is one of the big, th big things that McCaslin has done well, and also just coaching this team. You know, he found a system with this offense to exploit everybody's strengths, and, that, and that's rare. You know, he's, he's playing to all of his players' strengths within an offense, and that's something that you can't really, you know, you can't really ask for much more than that in your basketball coach. Um, one thing I will say with McCaslin, though, they get into these lulls on offense sometimes, you know, during the game where they'll turn the ball over or they'll miss a bad shot, and that, then it'll just keep happening. So I think that kind of falls back on coaching, and I think McCaslin could do a better job of maybe simply just taking a timeout and calming his guys down to avoid those, because sometimes, you know, they've, they've allowed teams to come back into games where, where UNT was blowing them out. But yeah, overall, McCaslin's done an outstanding job with this offense and this team. I, 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 oh. I just was going to say, I was going to blame that on pace because, you know, McCaslin wants them to slow it down, 
let everybody get set, then run their offense. And I think sure. the guys want to go out there and just play in transition. But that's not McCaslin's way of doing it. Now, UNT is taking on Law Tech tonight. And that game last year went a different way than we would have liked. Before we get into this game, though, let's get a little bit of history about these two teams together. Let's over, head over to our sideline reporter, Zach Fox, at the Super Pit, where the game will be played tonight. Zach? Thanks, Michelle. One month, four days. That's what separated these two squads. Most exciting games last year. And quite honestly, the quietest, the biggest exciting game for the Mean Green all last season. This time, only 18 hours will separate these two squads. Last season, Javion Hamlet with a running buzzer beater at the end of the game, 51-50 the final, and the Mean Green were happy. Little did they know, just over a month, the Bulldogs will return here to UNT Super Pit with revenge on their lips. And Daquan Bracey, who had 26 in the game, did just that. A buzzer beater for himself, just under a second remaining, 73-71 the final. However, these two squads have significantly changed just within the past year. Last season, very well uh, as far as conference champions for the Mean Green. LA Tech was shooting pretty good basketball. Right now, as far as even the past 10 games, the Mean Green, eight of their last 10 games have been wins. So definitely on the right side of things as of late. However, LA Tech, only five of their last 10 games have they won. So definitely a little lackluster. Javion Hamlet continuing his leadership role, 31 a game. And that's what he's averaging right now. That's the team leader. Now, as far as James Reese, as y'all just mentioned, 28 three-pointers. That's the team leader. And he's also averaging 30 a game. And who can forget the big post down low with Zachary Simmons averaging 26 a game. Now, as far as for LA Tech, the heavy power that they're bringing is Caleb Ludeau. He only averages 12 a game. And just underneath him is Isaiah Crawford with 11 and a half a game. So statistically, the mean green should have a pretty easy going for this little homestand. However, these two teams brought a lot of excitement and energy last season. The question is, will they be able to do it again in shorter time frame? We'll see if the mean green can take game one. Michelle. Back to you. Thank you so much, Zach, first of all. Glad to have you here. Now, UNT is taking on Louisiana Tech tonight. And as I talked about earlier, last year UNT won on the road and then Louisiana Tech won on the road against us. What do you guys think about the game tonight? UNT is trying to secure their fifth straight win. And if they can, that's a big deal for us. But it's Louisiana Tech. They are some competition. Connor? Louisiana Tech is a very balanced team. They have five players in double figures and points. So they, so they spread the ball around very well. UNT does so as well as I talked about earlier. They have three guys in double figures, but they also have had their bench contribute a lot here these last couple of, we, uh, last couple of games. So I'm really liking what I'm seeing out of this UNT team, and it's going to, to be important for them to continue what they're doing in terms of controlling the pace of the game because Louisiana Tech is going to try to take the pace away from them. So if UNT can be efficient like they have been as of late, I think they have a really good shot tonight. After Sunday's win, I agree with that, Connor. I think we have some momentum and they can get right out there out of the box and take over right now tonight, but we'll see. J uh, Justin, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with Connor. You know, this is a very balanced offense, just like UNT kind of is. And they run a bunch of plays with, with picks and, pick and rolls, you know, cuts. So the offense, offenses are kind of similar. So I think that everybody tonight is going to have to bring their A game, you know, for UNT. Because like Connor said, all five of their starters average double digits, as well as a few guys off the bench coming up close to double digits. So this is going to take another group effort tonight. I expect it to be probably two close games, like, just like last season. Um, I, I, I'm going to have to like disagree but agree at the same time with you guys. Uh, so you know La Tech last year, UNT, Javion Hamlet, it was 51-50, to 50, Javion Hamlet hit the game winning runner to win the game, a sluggish just defensive game. Well I think La Tech's completely different this year and Grant McCaslin said it yesterday in an interview, they don't rely on the three point shot anymore, they attack the rim. They were 266 in pace, pace last year but now they're 95th in Division One. So I think this team is completely different when it comes to running their offense. They're fast. They like to go early in the shot clock. So I think UNT's defense is going to have to really hunker down and set up for that. Now, Jack, I think that it's also important that we make shots tonight, especially free throws, because like you said, those games, they're close, and that means everything for the difference of any game. What do you think about that? Um, I think just when we get to the foul line, we need to make our free throws because every point counts. And uh, I think the free throw percentage this year has gone up for, for UNT than it was last year. And I think just the way the style Law Tech plays, it's, they're more physical and we will see more foul shots. 
Yeah, I, I, I want to talk about a key player, Zach Simmons. I know that we've all already kind of browsed over him, but he is two points away from 1,000 career points. He's going to make that tonight. I think that plays a role in the game. I think that is intimidating for Louisiana Tech almost to have, you know, such a big deal, such a big kid, and this is going to happen tonight. What do you, how do you think that's going to play a factor in how Louisiana Tech plays tonight? Well, I think it's going to be a, a huge factor. Uh, but the thing that I love about Zach Simmons is his, uh, his tenacity on defense. He's, in my opinion, for his, especially a guy like his size, he's one of the most athletic defenders in the country, not just Conference USA in the country. I really, so I really like uh, what, what he brings to the table. And, of course, on offense, he's very efficient. He knows how to find, a way, he knows how to find ways to score, whether it's pretty or not. But I, I really like Zach Simmons and uh, what he brings again to the table and what he, what he does to help, you in, to help bring UNT to that next level. I love Zach Simmons too, and I'm actually going to take it a step further. I think his best skill set is his passing ability. You don't see you don't see these centers, you know, that, that are able to find open three point shooters on the wing, but Simmons does. I think he's second on the team in assists, which is really impressive for a center. And he's going to have to bring his A game tonight. I think he's going to use that two points away from a thousand career to as a tip, chip on his shoulder, and he's going to have to because going against Kenny Lofton Jr. is a tough task. Yeah, I, I love the fact that you brought up the assists because uh, in Simmons and this McCaslin offense, he. He does post up and he does look around before he does try to score. I think he's going to have it tough tonight, though, with Kenny Lofton, you know, La Tech Bulldogs. I think he is a Bulldog. He, he's, they named that mascot after him. He's 275, 6'7". He's a freshman. He's huge. Yeah. Well, the UNT men's team isn't the only team off to a hot start and has a stacked roster this season. When we come back, we're going to talk all things UNT women's basketball. Stay with us. My son Andrew was always a joy to be around. I always taught him to be accepting of other people. That's why when Andrew was suddenly fired from his teaching job for being gay, my heart just broke. As a parent, how do you prepare your child for something like that? I hope we get to a place where people will be treated with respect, equality, and <laughs> love. Julie was always a, a voracious reader. She'd carry two novels on an airplane because she'd read one on a three, four hour ride. And at some point, I began to notice that she would read a page and couldn't remember what she had just read and she'd have to go back and read it again. I don't remember much these days after I read, but less does for me and I love it. I'm on buzz. I spend too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face uh, filters. Okay, you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. I'm gonna need that back. No. Nope. Kevin! Texans always get the job done, especially when we work together. As we safely open up our state, we need to unite as one Texas to contain COVID-19 and to get Texans back to work. If you go out in public, stay six feet apart from others. Wear a face covering and wash your hands regularly. Be a good neighbor. Be a Texan. Together, we're going to make our way through this. <laughs> women's basketball team is sitting at five and one in the second place spot in Conference USA right now. They will take on Louisiana Tech tonight away. Let's head over to Zach Fox at the Super Pit to get some backstory behind these two teams. Thanks, Michelle. These two have definitely had a little bit of trouble with each other in the past uh, few games. Now, this game in particular, is going to be huge for the women's Mean Green as they are one game behind in second place to Rice. 
Now, that's not to say that if they lose tonight, the season's over, but this is definitely a huge momentum spot considering that the Mean Green have not played in quite a few games now. So the two starters, Nayaya Boyd with 34 a game, and you have Quincy Noble averaging 32 a game, they will definitely be the firepower and try to get this squad back on track and potentially take number one uh, as far as in the Conference USA standings. Now, as far as the, the matchup between these two teams, LA Tech currently has the record lead at eight wins compared to the Mean Green three wins. Now, as far as the last time that these two met, this was January of last season, 74-69 UNT with a win here at the Super Pit. Now, as far as statistical side of things, it was 74-69. Expect just about that same score line as the Mean Green this season averaged 74 a game and give up six, uh, 71 a game. So it'll definitely be just about exactly what you expect as far as last season. Let's see if the Mean Green can get back on the winning side of things as far as against LA Tech and potentially a, a top to the number one spot by the end of the night. Michelle. Thanks, Zach. It's officially been 18 days since the UNT women's basketball team has played a game and it hasn't been their fault and it's not anyone's fault but other teams keep getting the coronavirus. Well coming out and not playing in 18 days but we are sitting at that second spot is questionable on how we're going to play tonight. Connor how do you feel the Mean Green are going to come out after waiting so long to even get back on the court? You have adversity every single season, but this season you have an extra factor, and that's called the COVID-19 factor. And so how will teams come out of quarantine or those long pauses? You really never know exactly how well they're going to come out, but I do know one thing, and that's, that's they're going to be mentally prepared. They're going to want to come out strong. Now, will they? That's going to be another thing because physically is a, di is a different thing than mentally. But I'm looking forward to seeing what the girls look like tonight, and I know the women's team is going to perform very well, but this Louisiana Tech women's team is also very good. Uh, but it, it, it's just always questionable coming out, of, coming out of a quarantine. So I don't really know exactly what the score is going to look like, especially early on. It could be a slow start. But again, I know the women are going to want to come out and perform to their best abilities. Yeah, I expect a slow start too. You know, not playing for three weeks is, is kind of hard for basketball because you get into the swing of the season and then just having to stop. I mean, I guess this season it, all teams are kind of dealing with it. But it, it isn't easy to get back into the swing of things. But this season it's been – Quincy Noble and Nia Boyd just taking over games for this team. Their most recent game against UTEP in the first game, both dropped 17, and, and it was a rout. You know, it was an easy win. The second game, Noble struggled, and they did not have enough offense to win that game. So it just shows me that these two girls are vital to the, to the team's success on offense. Yeah, I think, I think um, it, it really comes down. I would, I would buy in more to UNT beating La Tech. It's just... It, the last game they played, Jan 16th, was terrible. You know, 52 points, season low. Uh, season low in three-point percentage, field goal percentage. Quincy Noble had five points. I really think, like, if they would have won and had a better game, I might buy into this. But this La Tech defense is tough. It's super tough. It is, and I think we're going to learn a lot about the coaching staff and about head coach Jaylee Mitchell this week to see to what extent is this team prepared. And, th and that will tell you if you have your coaching staff moving forward. Now, those COVID-19 cases were not on UNT, so there is a chance that this 18-day hiatus that we've had is going to be good for the Mean Green. They took this time, and they got in the gym, and they practiced and all that. And so we'll see how Quincy Noble comes out tonight. The Mean Green won five straight games and then lost that last game to UTEP that we were just talking about. Yeah, I, and I wanted to add on to Justin. Uh, I, I forgot about, more, I think the most, one of the most support players, Maddie Townley. She, she's eight, she gets eight rebounds a game. I mean, Jan, January 1st, you know, New Year's Eve against UAB, she had 21 rebounds in a game. So we need Maddie Townley to rebound the ball. Jack, that's a great point. I really like Maddie Townley. She's in there. She gets dirty and down and gets the ball. And she's also averaging nine points a game. And while that's not double digits, that does make a difference. So I, I agree with that. I like Maddie Townley. The thing about Louisiana Tech, and this is what I fear, they have five girls who average double digits every single game. UNT is going to have to come out strong and put up points. But Louisiana Tech, I could see them easily guarding Quincy Noble after that game against UTEP it is plausible what do you guys think you know Louisiana Tech's going to look at film of, of what UTEP did so hopefully UNT can respond and you know the good thing about a hiatus an 18-day break is that you can really fix things you have a lot of time to get 
everyone on the same page. So maybe maybe it could be a good thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just always questionable to see how they how they will respond off of off of a long pause like that. Yeah, it, they play very similar to the men's team Louisiana Tech does. And the player I'm watching for is Amber Dixon. She dropped 26 in the game last year, and she's going to be matched up against a Quincy Noble for most of this game. So that matchup is going to be really important to the to the outcome of this game. Yeah, and if you if you have five people averaging double digit points and UNT gives up 74 points a game. I think that that's just a cause for concern. And then uh, La Tech, they, they force 18 turnovers a game, which is just a stat I like try to wrap my head around. But they also almost give up that many turnovers a game. So I look at La Tech and I'm like, if they have a bad three-point shooting game or they, they turn over the ball a lot, it breaks down to their defense. So their defense is really the strength of La Tech. Yeah, it's really important that the Mean Green take hold of this uh, team tonight in general, I think. What is one of the main keys to the game? I think it's important that we make free throws tonight. We've been struggling on the free throw line, and, and like I said, that always makes a difference. We are always close with Louisiana Tech, and Zach said earlier, they have an eight-game winning streak over us, but the last three times we've met, UNT has taken that W. We were talking earlier that this is a better season that we've seen from the UNT women's basketball team. I think that plays a big role for them. Jack, what do you think? Yeah, I think I think when you when you go into this game, you have to make your free throws. Uh, they they're terrible from the free throw line this year. I think they're 13th in CUSA. They're way down there. But the thing, if you want to beat La Tech, you got to make sure you make the three point ball, and that's what uh, this UNT women's squad is doing way better than they did last year is making the three point ball and do not turn over the ball either because La Tech will try to get turnovers. Yeah, I think offensively UNT matches up very well, like Jack said, because they rely on the three point ball heftily, and then. The, the La Tech defense is vulnerable to good three-point shooting. My key to the game is is not start slow. You know, you don't have to you don't have to get up to like a 10-point lead, but you can't avoid you have to avoid this slow start that we're all anticipating after this hiatus. I agree with you, Justin. You cannot get off to a slow start, as we a lot of us are probably anticipating. But it's also important to not live and die by the three. I know a lot of teams that will shoot the three very well, and when they do it, they'll look great and it's hard to beat them. But when they don't do it, it again, you, Alabama, is, men's basketball is a perfect example of that. They were shooting lights out, threes against LSU a couple weeks ago, and then they did not against Oklahoma. It was, and even though you could argue LSU is a better team than Oklahoma, it did matter. You can't live and die by the three. So the women's team tonight for UNT cannot live and die by the three. My keys to the game is take advantage of every single opportunity you have to put the ball in the basket. So whether that's free throws, layups, or transition points, Every little thing's going to be key. So again, take advantage of those once, once in a few opportunities. Yeah, UNT is a team that lives and dies by the three-point ball, but it's important when you have those games like Connor's talking about where you cannot make anything, that you have another option, that you have another offensive scheme that you're going to revert to when you can't make shots. Because we see teams all the time, like in the NBA, for example, where they're not shooting well and they just can't do anything on offense. So it's important for them to, to maybe go to Maddie Townley or turn to somebody else tonight. And that's what I, I, was, I was trying to allude to is that, you know, La Tech, they turn over the ball a lot and uh, they give up points, or they don't give up points. It's just, or they shoot bad from the three-point line. I'm like, how, how do they overcome that? It's defense. And that's something UNT has not proved this year at all to us that they can do. I agree. Well, it's very important. And we'll see how this game turns out tonight, but we'll give our official predictions later on in the show. For now, Conference USA basketball is ramping up. Stick around and we will break down UNT's biggest competition this year. Stay with us. All right, Monroe, you ready? Monroe. Here we go, the butterfly. The American Red Cross needs your help to install 100,000 free smoke alarms nationwide. Join us April 27th to May 12th. Volunteer at SongTheAlarm.org. Beautiful hills and highways are green. Wouldn't it be better if they were clean? Only takes one person to make things right. So join hand in hand and protect your countryside. One person starts and another follows through. Well, don't mess with 
Texas is just with you. I'm Whitney K. Lane. Remember, y'all, don't mess with Texas. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self. And I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. Day. The UNT men's basketball team is on the road to revenge after being so close to the NCAA tournament last spring. It's not going to be easy, but what exactly is it going to take for UNT to be the number one seed in Conference USA by the end of the season? Justin, what do we need to do? Well, first of all, they need to play some makeup games from all these tough opponents earlier in the season. I think the toughest competition going forward is going to be La Tech over the next two days, UAB and then Western Kentucky from the other division, obviously. Um, UAB hasn't been that good this season, but they have played some weak teams, so I don't necessarily see them as you know, a threat in the tournament. But La Tech, definitely, we need to take these two games. You'll basically eliminate them from winning the regular season division title, which is a big deal uh, come, come the Conference USA tournament. Well, it's going to be very important moving forward for UNT to take advantage. Uh, of every single game that they have. They, they can't have like that one game where it's like, oh, we just didn't show up today. You can't have that. Mm -hmm. And and, the, and this season especially, when you have back-to-back -back days of playing, it, it makes it tough. But these guys, these, these guys want to come back, like, like you mentioned, Michelle. They want to have that revenge factor. They have that revenge in this season because of how last season ended in that disappointing fashion that they couldn't control. And, but now they have the opportunity to take control. The, currently, they're in second place in the West Division. So here's what has to happen moving forward. UND has to win every single game, or at least not lose more than one, and they still face some really good teams against Louisiana Tech tonight and tomorrow, and then Western Kentucky and Marshall. Those are the teams that stick out to me. Now, Western Kentucky's from the East Division, but that'll all, all, all around go on your conference record, because it doesn't matter the division, it just matters the conference. So what's important, again, UND has to take, it, take advantage of their games, just worry about what they can control, and then UAB, who's currently ahead of them in the West Division, they played two road games at Louisiana Tech, February 12th and 13th. If Louisiana Tech were to beat them at least one of those times, it would give UNT a chance to take that number one spot. UNT also needs to continue to take care of business at home. You know, La Tech and Western Kentucky this season, they kind of lucked out in getting both those teams at home. And then their road schedule is definitely a little bit simpler with Southern Miss and Marshall, but Marshall's not a bad team at all. But they kind of lucked out with the scheduling, but they have to keep taking care of business at home. They're undefeated so far, they need to continue. Yeah, and I was, I was going to go back to Connor. Are you, are you alluding that they need to win out to basically just get a bid if they don't win the, the CUSA tournament? Well, no, they, they need to win out in terms of they want to be first for mm -hmm. the Conference USA tournament. Okay. Like the first seed for the West Division, because currently UAB is ahead of them. So if UNT wins out or not loses more than one game, then it gives them a shot to take that number one spot for the Conference USA tournament at and least the, for the West Division. The one seeds in this CUSA tournament are going to be huge in my opinion too because the difference between the middle tier teams and the bottom teams is huge. So if you get a one seed, you get to play all those bad teams first. Whereas if you're a two or three seed, you're going to have to go through the tougher competition. Jack, I wanted to ask you, so do you think UAB is our biggest competition all around or who else should we be worried about besides UAB? You know, like, like I said earlier, I think UAB, I think they're overrated. Uh, I think. UAB just, they, they sweeped Rice, Southern Miss, Middle Tennessee. Middle Tennessee is the worst team in the CUSA. It, they, they took, they split one with Charlotte. I just, and they're non-conference, I don't even have to name them. They're not good teams. I don't think, I really don't think UAB is that good of a basketball team. This might be a fluke. I know the record 14-2 is nice, but I really think Western Kentucky and La Tech, it comes down to them. And especially with Western Kentucky, because you have Charles Bassey who is just, I think, one of the best big men in college basketball. Fourth in rebounds, second in blocks. He's a beast. He's seven foot, Nigerian dude. He's just huge. Yeah, I think those are probably the top three teams that, you, that UNT is contending with. You know, with UAB, the thing is that you can only play who's on your schedule, right? So while they have beaten a lot of bad teams, they've, they've beaten the bad teams. You know, they haven't, they haven't had those fluke games where they kind of lost to them. But down the stretch, yeah, UN, UNT is going have to have to handle Western Kentucky, not, not only at home later in the season, but in the tournament as well. 
And Justin, what you referred to earlier, it's very important to get that number one seed, like you said, because you don't want to have to have as difficult, you, you don't want to have to have a more difficult uh, tournament, the conference tournament, the path to the championship game. Uh, but it's important for UNT, if they, when they get to the Conference USA tournament, to actually win it all. Like, you can't settle for second or third, because I believe, at least for Conference USA, the only team that's going to make the tournament, the NCAA tournament, is if you win Conference USA, because it's an automatic bid when you win your conference tournament. And again, if you, if you have an easier path, it makes it easier on your team. <laughs> and so, uh, for UNT moving forward, they have to, again, they have to win out, or at least not lose more than one game, because I think there's a chance Louisiana Tech could beat UAB one, if not both times, in a couple of weeks. Well, I, I have a question for y'all that just popped in my head. I might take Michelle's role, but what, what do you guys think about Zach Simmons pairing up against Kenny, the Bulldog Lofton, the big dude, and then uh, Charles Bassey, another big guy? Do you think that Zach Simmons, do you think it comes down to that as Western Kentucky and Law Tech? Like, that's a big matchup. What, what, what do you think that will affect us as? It very well might with these two games tonight because Kenny Lofton Jr. has been insane, and like you said, he's only a freshman. They both have very similar stat lines, too. Both average around 10 points a game and six rebounds a game. So I think the winner of that matchup is going to win, win this series and win these games. And then same with Charles Bassett. Yeah, he's been outstanding this season. He's getting na national recognition in the, in the Conference USA, which is a big deal. I like that you guys are talking about other players in the conference. What other players do we see in the conference just as a threat, as, you know, could take that CUSA player of the year like JV and Hamlet had it last year? Why not Hamlet again? I mean, if UNT performs as well <laughs> as we know they can, why can't? Because you know if there's a team that's going to win the conference, let's say if UNT were to win the conference, you know that it's probably going to be a player for UNT that would win the award most likely. And in that case, it would be Hamlet once again. Uh, Hamlet started off the season a little bit slow, but again, it could have been due to their competition they played. But he's been really, he's been playing very well these last couple of weeks. And I think, in my opinion, I don't know the exact stat, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's one of the best free throw shooters in the nation. He's 92%. I don't know too many players that are better than him. And, and Hamlet, to me, he just seems uh, very comfortable with the basketball in his hands. He doesn't panic. He, yeah, everybody has a few turnovers. Even LeBron James does. Even I would. No. But Javion Hamlin has been a great player for UNT, and he's going to be great moving forward. We already know that. So why can't Hamlin win it again? He might be able to. I agree with you, Connor. I agree. I think, I think record is really going to play a big factor who wins CUSA Player of the Year because each team has a, a designated star, in my opinion. You know, you got Old Dominion, who's got Malik Curry, has better stats than Javion right now. You got Charles Bassey, Western Kentucky. You know, and there's a bunch of people in Law Tech you can choose from. So I think whoever really ends up taking CUSA is going to win CUSA Player of the Year along with it. I agree with you, Jack. I do like Malik Curry right now from Old Dominion. Justin? I'll toss out a few names to watch this weekend. Charlotte guard Jameer Young against Middle Tennessee, one of the worst defenses in Conference USA. And then uh, guard Jevon Jackson from UTSA playing another bad defense in FIU, both around 20 points a game. Maybe not in Conference USA Player of the Year contention, but watch those guys this weekend. Well, coming up next, we're going to switch gears and take a look at the NCAA as a whole so we can talk about some other players. Stick around. Queen is just my everything. His smile did it. His smile, his eyes, his knowledge. My landlord, he decided that he wanted me to move based on the fact that I was transgender. Let's just respect people in everyday life for just being human. Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. It started with the original care package and millions more like it. Passed from hand to hand across land and sea to help survivors in the aftermath of war. As we grew, we found better ways to help those in need. Ways to make a real difference, not just today, but tomorrow as well. 
Be the difference in people's lives. Help deliver lasting change at care.org. Everybody can make something because I think everyone has a spark of creativity. And the reason that I have to keep making is because I don't think my life would be as fulfilling without it. If you make things yourself, that means you're not cowering in fear. You're out there taking chances. That, I think, is my way of saying I love you to the world. All right, now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. March is right around the corner and several teams are getting ready to dance. So, who stays on top and who falls before March Madness comes around? If we take a look at the current top 10, we have Gonzaga sitting right there at the number one. They're 17 and 0, haven't lost a game. It'll be interesting to see whether they falter. At two, we have Baylor. And like I said, again, they are 16 and 0 as well. I don't know if I see anyone getting into that one. But at three, we have Villanova. And then four, Michigan, five, Houston, six, Texas, seven, Ohio State, eight, Iowa, nine, Oklahoma, and 10, Alabama. Now, Justin, I know how you have some thoughts on this top four right now. What, do you, what are you thinking? I like the top four teams right now, but in my book, Baylor's, Baylor's by far the number one team in the nation. I think their 16-0 or whatever they are is, is more strong than the Gonzaga's 18-0 because not only does Baylor play in the Big 12, but they're, they're handling Big 12 teams on the road very easily. You know, we saw the, all the other night, they went to, to Austin and just whooped Texas. That's something that doesn't happen very often. Texas has been awesome. They've got Jared Butler, who's risen way up the NBA mock draft boards this season. He's getting comparisons to Damian Lillard and all these NBA guys, shooting 45% from three-point range is incredible. So Baylor, in my opinion, is the number one team in the book. I like the top four to be the one seeds uh, in March Madness. To say, like, who's going to fall, I'd, I'd probably look at Oklahoma just because, because they play in such a strong conference and they're playing, you know, Kansas, West Virginia, Texas Tech, Baylor in, on a nightly basis. So I expect Oklahoma to kind of come back to reality a little bit. They've heated up the past few weeks, but I think they're, they're going to fall, fall a little bit. And then I think when you look at a team like Kansas, who's at 23 right now, they have some games down the stretch against like West Virginia, Texas, Baylor, that if they win, they could easily rise back into the top 10. A very experienced group. Bill Self's been there forever. He always knows how to coach those guys up. I think Kansas is going to start heating up down the stretch. I think another team to watch for in terms of uh, moving up in the rankings over the last month of the season is Florida State. Uh, you look at their schedule moving forward and, of course, of what they're capable of. To me, that this is one of the hottest teams in college basketball. And you look at college basketball every single season, we always like are wondering, what is that team that's going to make like a deep run in the tournament? And of course, we know that the Blue Bloods are going to do, well, not maybe this season, but usually the Blue Bloods will do pretty well. Of course, the one seeds for that particular season will do really well, the elite teams for that particular year. And then, of course, you always have like a couple of those Cinderella's. But it's always like one of those five, six, seven, or eight seed teams that usually make a pretty good run. And those are the teams that that last two, three weeks of the season up to the month of the season, last month of the season, they're usually playing very well. And Florida State has been playing well. They've only lost one of their last six games, and they're winning in the ACC, which isn't as strong as a conference this season, but they're winning by double digits in that conference. They started the season off a little bit slow, but this was, this was a team that last season that many people had them going far. They brought back a lot, and they have played very well and up to their potential the last month of the season. This is a team moving forward with based on what they have rest in their schedule that could really make a move in that AP poll, and I would not be surprised to see them as a potential three, maybe four seed in the tournament. But Justin, I agree with you. I think Baylor should be the number one team because of that strength of schedule. We always talk about strength of schedule in, in football, at college football. We always discuss that every single week. So why aren't we talking about Baylor? They're doing what Gonzaga is doing, except in the Big 12. So to me, I think Baylor should be the number one team. But ticky tack with Baylor and Gonzaga, those are definitely the two best teams to me. And in my opinion, Jack, I want to hear what your thoughts are next on this. But do, I think that Baylor and Gonzaga this season are the two most elite teams that we've seen for a particular season since Kentucky and Syracuse 10 years ago. And I, I'm going to have to agree with you on that. You got, you got Baylor and Gonzaga, and I think they're up here, and then the rest of the pack is just down here. When I, when I look at Baylor, man, I think of – I, I like to put it in WWE terms here. I'm talking about Daniel Bryan doing the yes lock on John Cena, right? This is Baylor's defense. You, go, you start to get around the face here, and then the yes lock comes into play, and you eventually just tap out. That's what Baylor's defense does. We saw it against Texas. Baylor's defense, I, they, right now, if Baylor and Gonzaga played, I think Baylor would win. And we talk about the strength of schedule. 
Gonzaga's not playing in the Big 12, which is a bloodbath. Yeah, Baylor's a relentless group, and they just shut down opposing teams' best offensive player. Well, Connor, you brought it up, the Blue Bloods. I want to take a look. What is the deal with Duke this year? Thoughts, guys? Come on. Well, my opinion, and you're seeing this with all the Blue Bloods, maybe not North Carolina so much this season, but Kentucky, Duke, even Kansas started the season off a little bit slow. They've been improving here lately, and Justin thinks they're going to move up. I wouldn't be surprised if they did in terms of the rankings. But the reason why these Blue Bloods are struggling this season is because this season, unlike any other season, has brought us uh, interruptions. And, and you can't predict these interruptions because you don't know when they're going to take place. And so these teams that are particularly young, very talented, but are still young, are going to essentially have their problems and their weaknesses exposed because of COVID more so than we would see in a normal season. In a normal season, the Blue Bloods struggle a little bit early on. They might even get upset. But then come February, they start turning it on. But we're not seeing that this season because of the COVID interruptions and the less preparation that you had during a basically non-off season, and definitely a different style. That, that, that's, to me, in my opinion, that's why we're seeing the Blue Bloods struggle more this season than we've seen in recent years. Yeah, they, they haven't had a chance to just get on track. You know, they didn't have no preseason. They've had six games or six, seven games canceled, postponed. You got, you got seven incoming guys, three five-star guys. I, this team has talent. You just, as Coach K, you just can't get in a rhythm. And you, your best player, Jalen Johnson, who was a lottery pick, I don't know if he is anymore, just the way he's playing, was out early on in the season the first couple games. Yeah, Duke, Kentucky, North Carolina, three programs that are known for every single season having so much turnover. And this season, we are really seeing it affect them. You know, Connor, Connor pointed out the fact that there was, you know, a shortened off season, a weird off season, a bunch of game cancellations. It's really hard for a young team and an inexperienced team to, to go and to win games in this scenario. We saw with LSU in the football season, you know, when they had so much turnover and, and such a young team, they struggled. And that's what's happening to these three rosters right now. So I know that we can all agree that they're struggling, but do we see any way that they can improve, that they get better this season, or do we think that this season is a wash? Duke is actually in, in very much trouble of missing the tournament. They really need to beat UNC this weekend. That they game, really do. E That's a crucial game. I agree. Even though it's not a big ranked matchup game, the loser of that game probably misses the tournament. So it still bodes a lot of weight, even though these aren't the powerhouses that we're used to. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. I was going to say the same thing. Uh, UNC, Duke. You know, it, it might be a bigger game than it typically is when they're both ranked, both powerhouses, because whoever loses, they're basically done for. But I think Duke, I think Duke's going to win, and I think Duke's going to get in the tournament. That's kind of a hot take, but I think they have the talent. They have Matthew Hurt. If they can somehow skyrocket in the standings, Matthew Hurt could be ACC Player of the Year. This is a must-win game for Duke. This is a must-win game for Duke. Connor, thoughts? I was going to say real quick. It's a possibility that for the first time in years in the one and done era of college basketball that we might see some of these blue we might see some of these blue blood teams return a lot of these players for next season mm -hmm. and they could really be dangerous teams next season. They that's haven't had point. they haven't had team this time this offseason to really learn the schemes too. Yeah, no like Duke specifically, Shashevsky usually installs a whole new scheme depending on his player strengths, which is what we talked about with McCaslin earlier. So it's really hard for these guys to learn an entirely new offense and defense and everything in a shortened offseason. Yeah, and not being able to play plays another big role in that, all those postponements. Like we said earlier when we were talking about UNT women's, this year is just super unpredictable. So we'll see. But I do want to switch gears real quick and talk to you guys about the state of Texas. We have quite a few teams doing really well. Number one, Baylor, obviously. But what are some other Texas teams that maybe surprised you guys this season? I, I really like Tech. You know, Tech surprised me. Mac McClung, I... I Back in my sophomore year, uh, junior high school, I watched Ball's Life of Mac McClung and Bull Bull and all those guys. And he went to Georgetown. I was super hyped. It's like, all right, Mac McClung in Georgetown. Didn't do anything last year. And then now he's on Tech. He hit a game winner against Texas. I think Texas Tech got some swagger back. And I think they're, they're a team to be reckoned with in the Big 12. Tech is my team that I think could jump in. I really, I like Tech. I liked them last year. They're a good team. They're a fun team to watch. Connor, what do you think? They are a fun team to watch if you like to watch really good defense. Uh, McClung is a great offensive player, but they do need to have some more threats. Now, if you look at their record and their, their ranking, you'd probably wonder why they're ranked so high. Well, like Justin said earlier, it's because they play in the Big 12. I mean, the Big 12 and the Big 10 are by far, in, at least in my eyes, the two best conferences in college basketball. And I would not be surprised to see, come the big dance, 
that most of the teams that make it into the tournament from those two conferences are very successful in the tournament. Because when you play tough teams back to back or twice a week, when you play those, those amount of tough teams, it'll help you in the long run because you'll be used to that tough competition weekly and those teams are going to have more success in the tournament. So Michelle, I like watching Texas Tech. I like the way they play. I think Chris Beard is also one of the best coaches in the country. I mean, look what he's done. When he went to Texas Tech, like the same way that when, that when UNT hired their, their coach a few years ago, it was about, okay, how long is it going to take to build here? Well, it didn't take Tech very long at all, and they were playing in the national championship game against, against Virginia just a couple of years ago. So this Tech team has the potential to make a really deep run in the tournament, but there's a lot of Big 12 teams, and another team in Austin, I think, that it could make a pretty deep run in the tournament because the Longhorns have elite guard play, and that's what you need in the NCAA tournament. So I'm looking forward to seeing how the Big 12, and then Baylor, oh my gosh, the best team in the country, arguably. So it's a loaded conference. Let me go back to Tech real fast. So Texas Tech, they're a team that's, that's always gonna go far in March Madness because they play such good defense, as the other guys talked about. And they have something that nobody, nobody else in this country has, and it's Mac McClung, and he's been outstanding this year. And then like Connor said, Texas specifically, they, they had recruited outstanding the past few years, which is something that we usually don't see out of Texas. So it looked like that Shaka Smart hired uh, seemed to work out for them. They have a freshman in there, Greg Brown, actually from my hometown just dunking on people he's a huge guy you know and then houston a team that we haven't talked about much they saw they suffered a bad loss the other night to eastern carolina but they have a bunch of guys that that can perform and they're they're miles better than everybody else in the aac so they're probably going to be seated very high come march madness as well i did want to talk to you guys about houston no one has brought them up but they are actually sitting above texas right now at that five spot do you guys think that that's going to change well it will now with with oh, their loss with eastern the carolina record. yeah but i think i think I, I'd say Texas is a better roster than, than Houston, for sure, especially playing in the Big 12. Yeah, I think if you lose to ECU, you've got to drop a couple yeah. spots down the board. And Villanova's going to probably drop a couple spots with their loss to St. John's a couple of nights ago. Every, that, everybody's getting upset. Yeah, this, this was a crazy week. Did y'all not see all these upsets? This was insane. And Ohio State's going to go from seven to, like, four now after beating Iowa. Iowa's a lot of drop. movement coming in the top ten. Well... So, Thank you guys so much for sticking with us so far. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, it's time for predictions. Jeff Foxworthy here. You know, if you've ever found yourself repeating the same thing for 75 years, you might be Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. Wow. Thing is, there's a lot more to say. Like if you've ever found yourself burning yard debris and then walking away, well, you might be starting a wildfire. So for the love of the outdoors, go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. <laughs> what is it, Julia? Why are you so excited, honey? Oh, oh hey, do you, do you want to use your talker? Oh. With Julia's autism, using a talker can help her find the words she wants to say. My dog. Oh, you want to do something with Rose, Julia? Play ball. Oh, do you want to play catch with Rose? Oh. I think Rose is excited to play catch, too. Oh, Julia, you show us so many different ways to talk together. Oh, and play. Good catch, Rose. Okay, give, give Julia the ball. There you go. Okay, throw the ball, Julia. Oh, nice. For Julia's family, early screening for autism made a lifetime of difference. Find out more at screenforautism.org. Okay, Julia, there you go. Whoa, another good throw. That's the way. Everybody can make something because I think everyone has a spark of creativity. And the reason that I have to keep making is because I don't think my life would be as fulfilling without it. 
If you make things yourself, that means you're not cowering in fear. You're out there taking chances. That, I think, is my way of saying I love you to the world. All right, now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. Welcome back to Mean Green Game Day. Thanks for staying with us today. It's time for everyone's favorite segment, predictions. We're going to start off with some women's games. We're going to Louisville versus Notre Dame. We talked about this, you know, earlier before the show, I know, with you guys. But Louisville is good this season. They are 17-1. and one. They're sitting right there at number one. I'm going to take Louisville. Uh, Justin, who I'm gonna got? go. I'm going to go with Louisville as well. Dana Evans has popped off this season for them. And I don't think Notre Dame is what they used to be in, re in recent years. You know, they are a top-notch uh, women's college basketball program, but not this season. Louisville. Connor. I'll go with a better team here. In past years, that would have been Notre Dame, not this season. I'll go with Louisville. Yeah, Louisville, they, they lost to NC State number four, their number four team. They just beat Boston College. Uh, Louisville, I don't think they have a, a shot at losing this game. Hey, Zach, who do you got for this game? Louisville is definitely making a name for themselves, and we have a perfect five for five. I have Louisville over NC State. Perhaps we'll even see that in the championship game. Yep, we will see. I like, I like Louisville a lot this season. I'm excited about them. Let's talk about the UNT women's versus Louisiana Tech. I'm a UNT kind of girl. I am going with the UNT women's team. I think they're going to come out, and after this break, I think they're going to be ready to play. Justin, who you got tonight? I disagree with you. I'm going to go with La Tech. I just think this hiatus is going gonna, is gonna to really hurt them. La Tech has split most of their series this season, so I expect the UNT team to bounce back on Saturday. But after this long break, give me La Tech tonight. I'm always going to pick the mean green. I'm going to go with UNT. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I don't want to be that guy. I don't really believe in the UNT women's team, so I'm going La Tech. The defense is just too good. Wow, we are split. Zach, who do you got, the women, the UNT women, or La Tech? I'm going to go with the mean green tonight. 74, like I said, they average 74 points a game, and they average giving up 71. It's going to be a nail-biter. We'll see if they can get their fourth win. Well, let's look at some NCAA, big NCAA games today. So Alabama versus Missouri. We are very excited about Alabama here. I like Alabama a lot. I have them in this game 100%. I am confident that they are going to pull the W. Justin, who you got for this game? Yeah, Missouri hasn't really wowed me this season. You know, they haven't really played well against good teams, so I'm going to take Bama as well. I would go with, with, who, with, uh, with who Leonard Skinner would pick, so I'm going to go with Alabama Crimson Tide in this one. Yeah, I'm going to go Bama. They, like Connor said earlier in the show, you know, they got a plaque on their wall that says live by and die by the three ball. So that's what they're going to win with, and that's what they're going to do tonight. Well, Zach, who you got for the game? You got Alabama or you got Missouri? Jaden Shackelfer, the point leader for the, for the Crimson Tide, he's going to take over in Missouri, and Alabama will win nicely. All righty, well, we went five for five on that one. Pretty good. <laughs> Looking at the Wisconsin versus Illinois game. I like Illinois this season. They're sitting right there at number 12. They're one of those other teams I could see maybe making it right up there in the number 10. I'm going with Illinois today. Who you got, Justin? This is an interesting game because Wisconsin has not beaten a team that's currently ranked all season long, and they're, they're in the rankings. I'm going to say they get the win this weekend and they beat Illinois. Illinois has, hasn't really wowed me. They haven't really beaten that, that many good teams this season, so I'll take Wisconsin in a big upset. Two very good Big Ten teams that are likely to make a pretty good run in the tournament. I'll go with the Illini. Yeah, and I, I wanted to pick Wisconsin, but I looked at the rebounding in Michael Potter, six rebounds a game compared to Kofi Cockburn, Illinois, who's one of the best big men in the league that gets averages a double-double. So I think Illinois is not going to go blow them out, but it should be a win. All right, Zach, and who do you like right now, Wisconsin or Illinois? This is going to be yet another close game. However, I do see Illinois pulling this one out. They already have a three-game win streak at the moment. They will push it to four. All righty. Well, let's look at Conference USA now. Marshall versus Old Dominion. I feel very confident that Marshall's going to pull out this win today. What do you guys think? I'm going to take Old Dominion. I think these teams match up very well. And this is going to kind of no be another one, one of those weird games because Marshall hasn't played in three weeks or in two weeks, and then Old Dominion hasn't played in three weeks. So both teams are coming off this hiatus that we've been talking, off with, uh, talking about with the women. I'll just take the home team and take Old Dominion. 
think I hear a storm coming. That's the thundering herd. I'm going to pick Marshall on this one. Yeah, I'm going to have to go Marshall too, number one in CUSA, and uh, just pushing the ball. They're fast. They're going to come out hot. Yeah, I like Marshall right now. Zach, who do you got, Marshall or Old Dominion today? Trivion Kinsey, he's going to go ahead and lead the way for Marshall. It is ironic that both teams have waited this long in order to play a game. I think it's going to be pretty good. I think they're going to be both pretty sluggish heading out of the gates, but I do have Marshall winning it in the end. All righty. Well, let's take a look at the UNT men's versus Louisiana Tech. Our last prediction of the day, and I would say the most important one personally. I am going with our mean green. Now, I want to ask you guys, Give me a final score. How do you think the game's going to go? Who do you think your key player is going to be? And uh, obviously, who's your prediction for the win? Justin? I'm going to take UNT. You know, I think these teams play very similar games. We've talked about it, but UNT just doesn't lose at home. They're undefeated at home this season. They've played astronomically better than they have on the road. I'll say 75 to 70, UNT wins a close one. James Reese is the hero tonight. They're undefeated at home, and I think they're going to stay undefeated at home tonight. 65-61, final score. Key player, Zachary Simmons. You know, and, and my key player is going to be on Law Tech side because I'm going Law Tech. Isaiah Crawford, a stretch four. That means uh, Kenny Lofton's going to be in the paint by himself with Zach Simmons. That's going to create problems. I think it's going to be 65-61, Law Tech. All righty. And, Zach, who do you got? Do you have the UNT men or do you have um, – Louisiana Tech. And who is your key player for the game? What's your prediction on that final score? So this one's going to be a good game. I think it's going to have a lot of excitement again, but not as much as last season. James Reese, he will be another factor. He will have the most points tonight, and he, uh, his three ball is going to definitely uh, excite things up. The Mean Green will win 75-63. Alrighty. Well, I want to ask you guys one more time around. Do you guys see the series being a split? Because I think this game is going to be a split. I think we win tonight and we might lose on Sunday. Justin? No. I, th I think UNT takes both at home. They, s they know that they have to win these games in order to, to eliminate La Tech from contention and to stay in West contention themselves. I think they just see the weight of these games and having them at home is a huge help. I think UNT sweeps them. I think UNT sweeps them as well. I think tonight they win a close game, but tomorrow I think they take care of business decisively. You know, and I, and I, I would take Law Tech with a sweep, but since it's UNT at home, I think it's going to be a split. All righty. Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see tonight and uh, tomorrow. Thanks for joining us today on Mean Green Game Day. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter or on our YouTube channel if you missed anything. And we will see you next week.